Hey, I'm really proud of you. Doesn't that sound nice? Are you always this dumb? That one kind of hurts, doesn't it? Words have power, but no words have power quite like God's words. Let's explore that today. Hey there, St. Paul family and whoever else happens to be watching. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, thank you for watching this video devotion that is uh, based on Martin Luther's small catechism with explanation, part of our Back to Basics series, which is almost over. Our, uh, the last sermon in this series is coming up this Sunday, but I will point out in your reading plan uh, that the readings through the small catechism continue into next week. So you can count on another video devotion based on the small catechism coming to you next week as well. Wherever you happen to be in the reading plan when you're watching this, go ahead and do that reading uh, and then join me back here. Words have power. We all know that. Your day could, could improve or be completely ruined by the words that, that someone speaks to you. But as I mentioned earlier, no words have power like God's words. Uh, God's words do exactly what they say. When God said, let there be light, there was light. Uh, the power of God's word was able to create the entire universe when before there was, there was nothing there. Uh, all of the miracles that we see in the Old Testament weren't accomplished by human beings. Rather, they were accomplished by the power of God's word through those human beings. Then, of course, we get to Jesus himself, the word of God in the flesh. When Jesus spoke, things happened. When he said, your sins are forgiven, whoosh, they were forgiven. When he said to the storm, peace, be still, the storm obeyed and was calm. When he said to the dead little girl, uh, I say to you, arise, get up, she got up and life was restored to her. And so, when it comes to the Lord's Supper, which is our topic this week uh, and for our, our last sermon as well, uh, we, we trust the power of God's Word to do what it says. Right? Because without God's Word, again, like baptism, uh, it's, it's just plain water apart from God's Word. And, and so, too, the elements of the Lord's Supper, uh, the bread, the wine, there's, there's nothing special about them, right, until God's word is added to them. When God's word is added, so too is Jesus himself, his body, his blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Why? Because he said so. Now, it isn't some sort of magical incantation in which the, the, the bread and wine are, are changed into something else. That's the, the Roman Catholic understanding of, of what's going on. Uh, no longer is there any bread and wine. It has changed into Jesus' body and, and blood. But we can clearly see, no, there's, there's still bread and wine. Yet, we also recognize that now, through the power of God's word, uh, it's not just bread and wine. It is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. We don't have to explain it. It is a divine mystery. Um, uh, it's as simple as saying, uh, Jesus says it, I believe it. And we can believe it because we've witnessed before, we've seen the proof. God's word has power. What Jesus promises does come true. So when he says, this is my body, this is my blood. We believe it because the power of God's word has the ability to do just that. Jesus' words make eating a, a morsel of bread and drinking a, a sip of wine into a, a great feast in fellowship with Jesus himself and with all the saints and company of heaven. Trust the word. The same word that brought creation out of nothing. The same word that, that calmed storms and, and overturned death. 
that word is present and powerful in the Lord's Supper so that it does for you exactly what Jesus says, forgives your sins. We rejoice and give thanks in the power of God's word to change our lives and for the salvation available to us through the Lord's Supper. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, you give your body and blood under bread and wine that we may know with certainty that our sins are forgiven by your atoning sacrifice on the cross. Grant us so to eat your body and drink your blood, trusting in your words that we may receive what you declare, the forgiveness of sins. And so live in you even as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn of the day is uh, found in the Lutheran Service Book, number 629. What is this bread? It's a great hymn that, that teaches us exactly what's going on in the Lord's Supper. As we ask the question, what, what is this bread? What is this, uh, this cup? It is Jesus for you. So I encourage you, uh, click the link below this video, uh, listen to this song, and rejoice in the gifts that God has given. Until next time. God's grace and peace be with you all.